Ladies and gentlemen, Kyle That's a, of As that's the Structure Fails in the building! Oh, yeah. Hello. What is up, sir? How are you? How are you doing today? Hey, really good. Can you hear me? We can hear you just fine. Yes. That's uh, that's Lloyd right there. He's in a band called Burn Like Stars. I go by the name of BG. Kyle, could you please properly introduce yourself? Let us know whereabouts in the world you are right now and plug or promote anything you'd like. Hey everyone, uh, my name's Kyle Laird. I'm the vocalist of As the Structure Fails, alongside my brother. So we're a two vocal band. Uh, that's me there on the left front. Carter's there on the right front. Um, we are from Stouffville, Ontario, Canada. So it's basically just north uh, of Toronto, about an hour drive. And uh, excited to be here today. Stoked to uh, do the live. Hell yeah. We appreciate you joining, dude. Uh, you guys are basically known for the cores, to, for coming up with all the crazy new core stuff. What what sparked this idea initially? And can you tell us anything about the new video that you're working on? What sparked it initially? Um, you know what? The, the first one, the OG, the Surface, a.k.a. Hillbilly Metal, Cobb Core. Um... <laughs> You know, that was basically the one that started it all. And looking back, you know, we were nervous at the time to uh, to do something that was far, far from the norm, right? Um, and so I guess really the surface is what started it all and really instilled that type of confidence that we, you know, needed to really keep on the track that we're on making videos, you know, that don't have any correlation to the audio. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, nailed it. But, go ahead. <clears throat> I said you nailed it. Yeah, thanks. And then uh, the one we got upcoming, um, I can't share too much because it's honestly not all finalized, but uh, one thing for sure we do have coming is more of like a straight ahead video coming next because we do have kind of like the two sides to what we do. We have, you know, the more uh, classic dead serious performance style videos. And then we also have, um, you know, the, the themed videos where we really try to do something different. So that's uh, what's in the pipeline. Hell yeah. Awesome. Were, were you and your brother ever in another project before this one? We were. So um, we were in a band called uh, One for the Butcher, which was basically, you know, a high school band. Um, and we did that for a good few years. And what ended up happening was, um, you know, to make a long story short, we, we, we played a few shows with As the Structure Fails, actually. And we had already known the guys in the band as friends. Um, and so we kind of, we joined together, um, openings, closings of certain positions and, uh, Carter left guitar cause he was, uh, in one for the butcher. It was just me on vocals. Um, so he actually came up to vocals with me when we joined as the structure fails in around 2013, 2014 area. And um, no, no. When that happens, does the writing change because he came? He was kind of just contributing from a guitar writing perspective, but now he's also involved in the lyrics. Or was it always he's just as involved? I would definitely say that's one of our strengths as a band is writing together. Um, we really do all have a say when it comes to every position. Um, and and it's all a lot of that is because we're uh, multi uh, multi instrumentalists. So you know I'm a drummer, Carter's a guitarist, um, and so we can help in when it comes to the music. And so I, I'd say our band's just always done really well with you know collaborating and writing together, not so much independently. Lloyd, uh, do you have a question or two for Kyle? What's your favorite thing about your band? What's something that like really stands out to you with this group of guys compared to other projects you've been in? 
Uh, I would say the community of our band and, and not only our band, but the people that come out to the shows. Um, we just have a really faithful community. And from our online image, I think everyone knows that, you know, we're not trying to, we're not trying to fake who we are or, or be anything that we aren't. And so we just write music that we love to play and we make videos that we think, you know, everyone's going to enjoy. And people that share that mentality, m most of the time they become a fan. And, you know, I'd say really it's the community. And hopefully if you dig metal, then that's uh, that's the combo you're going to want. Hell yeah. Awesome. Um, what was the idea behind what could be the most boring metalcore music video I've ever seen. What was the thought process behind that one? Uh, great question. So uh, we thought to ourselves, just like we do generally, is what's the strangest thing that we could do <laughs> yep. in this video? And uh, our guitarist, I believe, really came up with this one, Brian. And uh, he was kind of just like, you know, so what if we kind of just sleep? And uh, of course, you know, it takes a lot of uh, conversing to really break down these ideas into something, you know, solid. Um, but essentially, yeah, like we just, we sat down, Brian came up with the idea, we really discussed it. Some of the smaller details were like, um, we're going to make the audience think that we're going to get up near the end of this. Right. But but we don't right so it, it's all just it's so bad it's funny and, and that was kind of the idea with it and also you know doing classic moves like cutting to you know the guitarist when there's a riff or cutting to the other vocalist when uh carter's singing his part or i'm singing my part and so there's a you know all those small details that uh, it came out great. Yeah, it yeah. came out great. Let's let's play it real quick, and then we'll ask some uh, some funny questions. Well, I'm a huge fan of your music and your videos. They're both separately and simultaneously entertaining. Um, what is what is? I imagine fans all the time are like, "I have an idea. I have an idea." Is there is there like really bad core ideas that people have given you that you're like, "Yo, yeah, that sounds cool," and secretly you're like, "Nah, we would never do that one." <laughs> A hundred percent. You actually go to the pinned comment. It's on this video. Um, there is a list of a hundred ideas right there. Yeah. Uh, so there is some really good ones that we are probably going to bust out. Uh, there's some others on there that I don't think are as strong or very difficult to pull off as an independent band. Um, that's the thing, you know, that's really the, the thing that makes those videos. Cause of course it's, you know, you can't just go perform. It's all done. Right. Um, you really have to plan those strategically and, uh, to get all the, all the details to work properly, to get the venue, to get the right setting, all the props, you know, it's gotta be a very specific idea. Um, some things are just impossible when it comes to like, unless you're some signed major artist and they're going to put 50 K into your video. Right. Um, you know, some of them are just impossible. So we really have to make it, you know, what's going to be effective and what's still possible for us to do. Totally makes sense. Uh, let's do a little trivia, but to do the trivia, I need to know what movie or TV show have you seen more than anything? Or if I ask you a question about this movie or TV show, you will not be stumped. Ooh, I'm not a huge rewatcher, but I would say, like, during my childhood, I watched Lord of the Rings so many times. Okay. Lord of the Rings, it is. Give me a sec. Is there a particular uh, movie from Lord of the Rings? Um, I, I've probably seen The Fellowship of the Ring the most, if I had to guess. Okay. Lloyd, I just watched you... the extended versions of all those the other day. It's like, oh man, aren't they great? Eighteen they hours are really gone. Really good background play video games kind of movies. And the music, like big time. It, 
Oh, the the music That's that you I hear. That's what I inspired to write stuff and to get into my feelings. If I'm about to write something, I can't just force myself to be sad. I'll watch something epic and like try to get inspired, like Marvel Endgame or Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones. Something that like kind of just get you out of your normal sense. Yeah, yeah. This is a really, really hard trivia question, and then I'm gonna let you pick whatever song you want of yours. That uh, well, I'll ask a question about that, and we'll we'll get into it. But your trivia, sir, regarding Fellowship of the Ring. In Fellowship of the Ring, a bunch of characters are gifted the Great Rings. I need to know exactly how many of each character was involved in the gifting oh. of the Great Rings. Oh, my goodness. Now, I'll, I'll give you a hint. There's men, dwarves, and elves. But how many elves, how many dwarves, how many men? 100%. Oh, I can't say the total? Well, the total is 20, but, or 19. Well, 20 if you count Gandalf, I suppose. But uh, how many of that... each, elves, dwarves, and men? Three. I think that... Is the question for Lloyd? No, the question it's is for you, sir. Does. He's just trying to mess with you. Okay, okay. Um, honestly, I think that is in one of the intro scenes where they're showing all the rings of power and where they forge like the the one ring to rule them all. I I feel like maybe there was. I I wouldn't know. That's very difficult. I think one of the sets is eleven. That's kind of not the answer I'm looking for. I'm looking for how many elves, how many dwarves, and how many men. Like individually, yeah, blank cool. elves, blank dwarves, blank men. Uh, is it seven for the dwarves? That is correct. Wow, I can't believe oh. I remember that. Um, is it uh, nine to the elves? That is not correct! Mm. It is three elves, nine men, seven dwarves. Nine men. Nine men. You were getting close there. A lot of dudes. Tell me about toddler core. Yeah, that uh, that was a uh, an idea that uh, I had had for a while. Honestly, um, you know, like we gotta do something that's fun and something that's you know relatable, especially to anyone with kids or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> The intro drool scenes, uh, they're great. Um, I would say, basically, uh, we came up with the idea, and the difficult part here was, um, where are we going to do it? And so we actually got uh, the daycare, basically. If you look in the description, it's the daycare from our childhood. Really? So, um, wow. yeah, yeah, cool idea. Did they remember you at all? Probably not. I don't imagine. There's probably different people working there and or different ownership yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah, they, they had no idea. Okay. Let's turn it on and listen to it. What artist made you want to pick up a microphone and or drum, drumstick, and, and become a musician in the first place? I would say a big inspiration was uh, my father. Um, he is uh, He's a musician himself. And we grew up in a very musical family, not just our immediate family, our extended family as well. Um, so, like, my father is a guitarist and a vocalist. My mom's a vocalist and a pianist. My eldest brother's a bassist. Carter's a guitarist and vocalist. And I'm a drummer and vocalist. Um, oh, so like it's a super always, group. It's like a super group. Yeah, you know, like, we're all... They literally asked us, you know, when we were kids, it was... What do you want to do? I said drums, he said guitar, and he said bass. And that was that. Worked out well. That that was that was it was one conversation and that set it up for, you know, the next twenty five years. So if I put your whole family in a musical death match, who <laughs> would be the most talented? Who would win? Everyone would win at their own individual. God damn it. Fair enough. It's a good that answer. A it's smart. He's trying. I he's trying to get you to throw somebody under the bus, but it's not going to happen. But <laughs> I, I should. Be, number one, though, I got to throw Carter under the bus. You know, got if him. There's anyone to <laughs> throw under the bus. Got, got him. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> then it's, it's. Hey, uh, uh, this could be the most important question we've asked you this entire interview. 
Where does Gandalf go to meet Saruman? Where does Gandalf go to meet Saruman? He meets him in his in his tower. But it's where it has a name. Uh, the city or the building? Like the area. I it can't doesn't specify in the answer. I haven't seen I've only seen the movie once, so I couldn't I'd be lying to you if I told you. It starts with an I. Isengard? That is correct! Give me a hell yeah. Good, good shit. Let's see what he got. got Let's see what he got. Lizzie, I got the auto, yeah. All right, so I have to take a shot. I'm not sure if you're a drinker yourself. You're more than welcome to join, but it is totally not required. Um, Lloyd, we, I, we probably have time for maybe two more questions each. What's something that you want to ask Kyle? Is there a music video you guys have started and had to scrub or like an idea you were about to like do, but then it just became too complicated or you just decided not to? Um, yes. Uh, yes, there is. It's which it still could happen. Um, but oh. as of now, it's canned. But it was fishing metal. Oh, that's got to happen. <laughs> That's got to happen. Enough. And uh, you could see how there's going to be some challenges there. I got an idea. The Aqua, Aqua Core, which is the underwater one. Somehow you guys are underwater, but it's a two-part video. You get caught by hooks at the end, and you guys are the fishermen in the next one, and you catch yourself somehow transitioning to the... Fucking to the... deep, bro. Oh, dude, Let's go deep. It's, okay, it's actually... okay. <laughs> It's Never. funny that you say that because we've uh, we have an idea, something along the lines of uh, maybe someone will literally get reeled in, like, and they'll be going silly salmon, foot, fish hook kind of thing. We're on the uh, same level. What? We're on the same level. Hell yeah! What's your favorite video game, Kyle? Oh, favorite all time. I gotta go with Halo. Did you ever do any like tournaments or anything? No tournaments, but uh, growing up with two other brothers, it definitely got competitive. Um, I would say of everyone I know personally in my life, there isn't anyone who's beat me at Halo. Wow. You'd beat definitely. me. I'm not I'm not very good at Halo. I'm pretty good at first-person shooters, but not that my one. My eldest brother, though, is really good. He, I would say if we played, it almost might depend on which one. Because the new one came out recently, Infinite. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, honestly, I haven't really, uh, I haven't played it much. I played a lot of Halo Five and all the other ones, but um, it's just been so busy right now. Like, uh, you guys know how life gets, obviously. Um, but just between work and then, uh, you know, doing the band, it, it it takes a lot out of you. Then you know, not to mention all the you know general stuff that you got to do in your day to day life, right? Right. So there's almost no time left for the games. I I'm kind of in the same boat. Um, I'm a big COD Mobile fan. Most Call of Duties, but... COD you Mobile. guys ever played Bucket League? A couple of times. That's a, that's a fun game, too. Not That one's not for me, but I, I know it's like crazy popular for sure. Uh, I love soccer, and I'll play soccer games. I don't like cars, so the car aspect ruined it for me. Oh, yeah. Kyle, what's a, what's a piece of music advice? I ask everybody on the show the same question. What's a piece of music advice that somebody in the industry has told you that kind of like changed the game for you or a terrible mistake uh, either you when you, while you were in this band or a previous band that you made that you don't want any starting up band to make? I would say most people fall into one of two categories. Most artists. And the first category I find, uh, and this is the one that I fell into along with just the guys in our band, is um, the perfectionism. And that is a huge detriment um, when you delay and delay and delay and delay and think that you're going to do this or make it better or, or something like that. Um, a lot of the times, you know, there there is a limit to to you know how good that single song might be or how good you're going to get that mix or that video 
or whatever it might be. And then on the flip side, people who are coming out maybe a little earlier than they should, not as practice as really they should, not giving the people they who are seeing them the right impression. You have to give the right impression. Um, they always say first impressions are everything. And so, True. you know, when you do put something out, you want to be proud of it um, and you want to have, you know, room to grow as well. You know, like your your best song ever is not going to be your first song. Um, so I think uh, for most people, realize which category you're in and then address it from there. Maybe, you know, be a little less strict or be a little more strict. And that's what I'd say. It's really good advice. Holy shit. Great. Yeah. Great words right there. Uh, Lloyd, yeah. final final question for Kyle. What got you into your perspective of instrument? Other than like family and stuff, like was there anything else that like drove you to really push what you do? A hundred percent. My my cousins were into metal, and um, funny enough, like I was very blessed when it came to vocals, metal vocals specifically. Um, you know, some people are born with like a, a great singing voice right off the top. You know, you can somehow see like, you know, those kids in high school that have never practiced, but they can just sing well. I kind of feel like that was for me with metal vocals. Um, I had uh, no official training. I, I did uh, later, but I basically could scream from day one without pain, um, which I, which is a heavy blessing. Um, of course, you can always overdo it, so be careful if you're trying to do metal vocals here. But um, it came naturally to me, and then what had to happen was, is my musical taste was not heavy originally. Uh, I had to slow brew into the heavy genres where. Um, you know, I first respected the drumming when you, when you come in and you hear the shredding double bass and stuff that isn't played in any other genre. Once I started to hear that, and then you start to adjust a little bit to the vocal and basically with all the, uh, influence of music on my life and add that with getting into some great metal bands via drumming and then screaming coming naturally to me. It was just the perfect combination for me to say, you know, this is what I want to do. This is where we're going. And as of today, we're, you know, we've never, uh, we've never had this many people listening to our music. So this is the highest we've ever been. And yeah. You, I have one oh, final question. Familiar. I'm sorry, but you talk like an engineer. Are you the engineer of the group who does all the demoing and stuff? Yes. Huh. Uh, I'm not the sound engineer. Um, Brian, the guy on the far left in that photo, um, the, the one beside me, exactly, yeah. He does the recording engineer stuff. I handle a lot of the a lot of the boring stuff that has to be done um, when it comes to the band, like, you know, releasing all the music, all that type of legal paperwork, um, financing, all the money, um, all oh, that sounds type like management. Stuff. Yeah, kind of like management. You know, when you're an independent artist, you have to be able to do many different things. Um, so your main question, though, was am I the engineer? I'd say uh, uh, on the business side, yeah. Gotcha. Hell yeah. Well, Kyle, we appreciate you, man. Uh, your band's awesome. Your videos are hilarious. Don't ever change, man. You guys are super cool. We really appreciate you joining us today. Uh, much success to you in the rest of 2022 and, of course, in 2023. And uh, please, you're welcome back anytime you'd like, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was great to, to sit down with you guys. And I, I just noticed one thing here in the chat. What's the most awkward video you've ever done? It would have to be Turkey Core when I sat down and got gravy poured all over my body and they <laughs> rubbed it in. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was honestly like uh, painful because yeah. I sit there with my legs open. Like it was very very awkward and painful but uh, totally worth it and uh, with that 
I can head out. Thanks that's a, for that's an excellent, excellent uh, <laughs> segue into the next part here. Kyle, you're awesome, brother. Thank you so much, man. All right, as cheers, guys. the easy. structure fails. Yeah, hell yeah.